Hi guys, we're with NVIDIA today and as you know, servers are the big thing. We're actually, we found a nice one here with HP. Steve's going to tell us about it. Hi, Steve Tolmay from Hewlett Packard Enterprise, part of the Asia Pacific team, technical consultant. So today what we have here is the Apollo 6500 Gen 10 system. It's a I think before we, start, before we go on, okay. why is it called an Apollo and not just the Gen most of our readers will be familiar with the HP naming of servers. Sure. Why has this got a weird name? Okay, so we have a whole range of systems that are called Apollo, and they're really architected around density. So this right. is a density play for GPUs. Right, so what okay. you can see up here is eight GPUs, latest technology from NVIDIA, the Tesla V100s, and that's what it's all about. So a 4 u rack system with two Skylake processors interconnected with NVLink with eight GPUs. That's interesting. That's I, think, I think your competitor only does four, I think. Okay, so uh, there, there are many different options out in the marketplace, but we, what we've targeted for is the majority of our customers around density, power and cooling. And it's used across academic through to industry uh, applications. So we have many customers from high performance computing areas, AI areas using the system, uh, from electronic design automation through to computer aided engineering, uh, through, through many sure. other uses. Uh, so this example here we have today is a GPU and 4 IU. Uh, so you bring this example of this form factor because of the density. Correct. That's exactly right. And that's why we called it the Apollo. So our Apollo brand uh, is based on density. We have a motherboard on the bottom here that's uh, pretty similar to our DL380 motherboard. That's the, probably the most sold computer system in the planet. So sure. it's a 2U site style server. So we've taken that motherboard, put it in there, integrated it with the GPUs, integrated with the same sort of storage that's on a DL380 out the front here, NVMe or SATA or SAS disk drives, uh, and integrated with hot swappable devices such as the fans, the power at the, at the rear, at the sure. front of it, yeah. the sure. rear um, connected as well. So what power, we, what, what power capacity are we talking so here? So we've got each one of these power supplies here, we can take one out. Sure is uh, 2200 watts. Okay. So they come out uh, you know, just <laughs> disconnected. Oh, that's not a part of the server, guys. <laughs> no, that's right. So we can bring it out. So 2200 watt power supply. So Eight. it's a pair of redundant. So, so what's the top. total? Total is uh, 44. Yeah, well, so that's 2200 and we can have four of them. So you can operate with two and you can have N plus one or N plus two on your power. So that's targeting really, you know, types of users, whether they want to have uh, you know, business business uses where they want to have N plus N style storage. Okay. One thing with GPU dense servers, they usually skip on the storage. Yep. And so, uh, of course, you know, we do have a full full unit here, so you're going to have a bit more. Yep. But how do you tackle that sort of compromise in this sort of product segment? Because yep, this absolutely. is a bit more. So come around yeah. the back here and we'll show you around the back. So around the back here, I mentioned the server, the tray is all modular, so we can use either the. Uh, uh, SXM technology right. from NVIDIA, or we can put in a PCIe tray. Uh, this example here is the S S S S this is the SXM tray okay. example. And so why, sorry, why would you? So you know, NVIDIA makes both versions. Correct. From a server OEM point of view, why would you use one or the other? So that's the modularity about this. We can either have the SXM tray or the PCIe tray. And the difference if you use it is to have different types of GPUs. So we can put in the P40s in the GPU, uh, in the PCIe style tray that won't oh, go okay. in here because they're a different form factor. So we can take a different choice. So this tray simply slides in, connected by the back to the motherboard, and it's, it's all about modular design. The other, the other key thing to this, you talked about how do you get to your storage. Well, on the back here, we have... We have four slots of PCIe 16 by slots enabling us to connect, in this example here, four two, two uh, connections for InfiniBand. So each okay. one of these is InfiniBand, we put 100G, we can put OmniPath in there, or other types of uh, interconnects. So where's things going? So you're seeing that you still use, people still using InfiniBand because that's in like a sort of, I don't want to use the word legacy, but that's the existing. How you say, is things going towards OmniPath or still a bit early? So I think both, are, so pretty much the market standardised now on 100 gigabit. So yeah, sure. 100 gigabit, whether it's Ethernet, whether it's OmniPath or InfiniBand, the difference with the in InfiniBand versus OmniPath or, or Ethernet is the types of software. So GPU Direct, allowing your connectivity across the GPUs to, to the interconnect. That's some advantages for uh, InfiniBand. And then when we connect that out, we then have dedicated storage connectivity to things like Weka I.O. 
new generation parallel file systems that enable high I.O. to these AI intensive GPU servers. So we're just looking here, we have one, so how many compute no nodes does this so this is, this is a single compute node, yep. and it's, uh, as I said, based on the, the DL380 design. Okay. We can just undo the back of it here and pull the tray out. Sure. Everything's modular, so we can pull the complete tray out, and we have the modular tray, which has got up to 12 uh, DIMM slots, two Skylake processors. We have integrated onto the motherboard what we call an AROC, or an enabling our Smart Array, SAS, come SATA, come NVMe style controller. And then we also have modules there to enable extra connectivity for, for uh, Ethernet and an additional PCIe slot on here. And very much integrated with all of our ProLine and our Apollo brands is the ILO management connectivity for managing the server. So since this is GPU orientated, yep. how do, what's the standards of Ethernet we're going with? So um, what I've noticed with some server vendors they're targeting different Ethernet standards on different niches. For example, on the new Blade, they might go with the newer standard 2550-100. Okay, sure. That's, so can, that's a standard I'm talking about, it's another yep. vendor though. So that comes back to this connectivity up here, what you want to get to your GPUs. This can be Ethernet, could be 10 slash 25, could be 50, could be 100. We've got an additional slot here that you can put in additional internet, inter, high-speed interconnect connectivity. Um, so it's really about expandability and how much connectivity you want to have. And so by doing this, making these all PCI 16 by connectors sure. with PLX chipsets inside the server, we get that throughput from GPUs to network connectivity through the process. Yeah, so, but otherwise, just it's standard, for example, B BTO options. You're not, for example, making, oh, we're going to make 25 default on this product. It's just, just pretty Correct. much, yeah. And that's, that's pretty much everything you see here, other than this tray, is taken from technology to have across our whole range. So, all of these cards operate on all our pro lines, all our rack mount servers, all of the, all the, the smart arrays, similar on across so all of the whole portfolio. What, what it's so all about. modularity, we talk about storage options. What's uh, how does HP go with Optane? With Optane, we'll be able to do that. So the sockets here, we can put, put in Optane uh, memories as they become okay, available. Optane, so we'll, Optane we'll talk about both. Yep. Optane DIMMs and Optane storage. Yep, so, so Optane DIMMs as they become available with Cascade Lakes. Sure. So this server is ready for Cascade Lake. We'll simply take the processors out, drop in the next generation when it comes out in 2019, put in the uh, put in the Cascade Lake processors. We'll be able to put in Optane DIMMs into these. And round the front, we've got connectivity around here that enables us to put in NVMe or SATA SAS and Optane okay. drives for the rest of this the drop-in technology, that applies with our SXM GPUs as well. So say in the future... In the future? So because that's the modularity you can What, what I find yeah. is, there's not many, you know, those people follow hardware. I think more people know a lot about PCI Express, but SXM is kind of a no OEM thing, it's not much yeah. known about it. Yeah, exactly. So SXM2 is very much driven by, uh, by NVIDIA. It's a sure. way of interconnecting with the NVLink to get the, the bandwidth across the GPUs. The modular design of this with the tray, which allows the connectivity in the back here and the power and the connection to the Ooh, server. Oh, these are power pins, these are power Oh, hello. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you've got each one of these GPUs is 300 watts. So you've got a fair amount of power that needs to come through. And so just, to we're going to talk about this and say, just to, just to clarify to my viewers who are using this, you've taken this out of the chassis, this, 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 this tray sitting on. This bit's in here. We can, we can lift yeah. it in and show you if you want. No, that's all right. We'll put it back because we want to talk about the... So we've got a lot of heat sinks here. Correct. So I'm guessing these are MV switch and these are uh, GPUs. These are the NV link connectivity. Wow. And this is each one of these is a V100, Tesla V100. 32 gig. 32 gig. gig. Uh, SXM2 based GPU. That's a lot of heat, lots of power. That's a lot of heat. So, so how is that cooling? Oh, these are huge fans. These are all modular fans, so we can. So cooling, or oh, free, well. free fans. Yep. So, so this is significantly enhanced fans. cooling, say, compared to a similar size Pro Lion. Correct, that's yeah. exactly right. That's right. Absolutely right. And so the, also what we can do, you talked about before, is generational change. By doing this poor design, right, whatever, yes. we can slot in the next generation of GPUs as they become available. Yeah, the, the user doesn't have to take the chassis out of their rack, they just take Correct. the computer yep. nodes out. What we also did by putting the power supplies, this is the front of the server, right. we wire the power supplies round the back and you actually see the connectivity round the back. <laughs> 
external for normal connectivity for power in the back and inside a server rack. Is that new for HP or this is the first the... time we've done this where we put the power supplies in and wired them around the back? Okay, the cables. that's yeah, interesting. Yes, yeah, so this is the first time we've done this. So I thought it is high density. Correct. High density mean GPUs or storage or, for example, you can have we have the compute we have the compute yep. uh, form factor here. Yep. So density could also apply to compute it's nodes. It's the whole package. It's whole the package. GPU. It's the compute and the storage. So. The ability to have these eight GPUs, that's oh. pretty much a bullet point of this. It's not, yep. okay, we make Apollo just for GPUs. Correct. In fact, I put the bullet points down here on some of these, you know, in terms of the benefits and the usage of the Apollo 6500. Okay, so Apollo has a unique name in terms of HP and NVIDIA. NVIDIA has the same five, we're not talking about that. Whatever happened to HP Moonshot? Moonshot. <laughs> so Moonshot still exists today, and it's and it's more being morphed into our IoT strategy, so our Internet of Things. So you start to see the, the work that we've done in the Moonshots coming across into our Edge Line products. We're moving more and more of that Moonshot technology down to the edge where the data is collected out anywhere, you know, whether it's on an oil rig think, or whatnot. Else. And I think just compared to a couple of years ago, we have these dense things, and I think a lot of that is just filtered down just in ways that, you know, we sort of not really predicted and go, oh, you know, we know how to do this, we can do this now. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, just the parting remarks, so yeah. this is the type of system that those doing HPC who need the GPU power to be using these sorts of things. Correct. Whether you're doing HPC or AI, the system's targeted exactly for that style of workloads. And, uh, you know, we've already mentioned Cascade Lake, right? That's really, so what parting remarks should we take away looking at this new type of form factor? Modular design, uh, bringing down the economics and dollars by doing and it I as think, well. I think that's uh, one thing that's still was. So is this uh, Skylake, Cascade Lake only, not Epic? No, it's not Epic. No, correct. So we have other systems targeted at Epic processors, but they're more targeted at compute only at this stage. Okay, so it's a more of a value-oriented solution, and those who want... You know the the big the big heavy metal. This is heavy, very heavy metal. Heavy metal, absolutely. So <laughs> this sort of thing. Exactly. All right. Thank you, Steve. Good on you.